be accomplished. Run with me to the scripture. <coughs> Luke chapter number 8. Let's all go to Luke chapter number 8. The scripture will be on the screen and our children will help us uh, to read uh, the scriptures. Jonathan? Uh, they will help us to read the scriptures both on the screen and from the Bibles. Luke chapter number 8 and we'll start reading from verse 1. Luke chapter number 8 and we'll read from uh, verse number 1. Luke 8 and we'll be reading from verse 1. We want to see was there any support given to Jesus when he was preaching the gospel. Luke chapter number 8. Let's all go to Luke 8 and read from verse 1 to 5. Or we can go up to 8, but we can concentrate just on the beginning of that uh, chapter. Jonathan, if you can read for us. Luke 8, read from verse 1 to 5. What does the Bible say loudly so that our audience uh, in the Zoom and those on uh, social media uh, can be able to hear the scripture? Whatever we do, whatever we say must be based on the word of God. I've been writing a lot of assignments from school and one of the things that uh, they will tell us uh, even in wherever we work is that uh, where did you get this information from? You have to reference. I'm sure Richard, who is doing a uh, uh, master's, uh, must be familiar with uh, those terms. Where did you get this work from? Who said it? Can you back it? And are these the authorities on the subject? So when it comes to discussing any matters of the Bible, or about God, we always go back to the Word of God. Yes, Brother Jonathan, read for us Luke 8. And for those in the Zoom, Elias will be able to type the scriptures. And also those on Facebook uh, should be able, uh, they'll be able to type the scriptures for us. Luke 8, 1, 5. What does the Bible say? Uh, after this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another. After this, Jesus began to move from where? From one town to another and from one village to another. Carry on. Proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. So he was moving. Luke 8 is telling us. Now after these things Jesus began to preach the gospel of the kingdom and moving from one town to another, from one village to another. What was he preaching? The gospel of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him. The twelve disciples were with him. And also some women who had been cursed. Oh. I want to, to, to read that one slowly with a Brummy accent. I know you've got a uh, uh, you've got London accent, but I want you to read it uh, in a Brummy accent from Birmingham. It's not Birmingham; it's Birmingham. <laughs> yes, lead story that one. The disciples, the twelve, and were the, with Jesus, and also some women. Who and also some women. What were the women doing? Had been cured of evil spirits. Who, were, who had been cured of evil spirits? Called Mag Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. From whom seven demons had From come. her, seven demons, and the Bible counts how many demons came out of her. Seven. Carry on. Joanna, the wife of Chusa. Joanna, the wife of Chusa. The manager of Herod's household. The one who was in charge. The husband was in charge Susan. of the resources of King Herod. 
the wife believed and they were with Jesus. Susanna and many others. And many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. These women were supporting Jesus and his ministry. Where did they get the resources from? From their own means. Well, a large crowd was gathering around. And many people were gathering and coming to Jesus. And people were coming to Jesus from town after town. And people were coming from different towns. He told this parable. And then Jesus began to tell the parable of the sower. Maybe we can end there. Thank you for the reading of the word. Let's give Jonathan a big hand for reading the word. The word of God. Now, that's the starting point. Jesus was preaching the gospel and he began to travel from one city to another and from one village to another preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, this is our Lord Jesus Christ. He came to share the gospel of the kingdom. And this mission has not finished. Because when he was going back to heaven, if you read Matthew 28, Mark 16, the Bible says he turned to the disciples and the followers. He says, now go ye therefore into the world. And for your own information, Jesus never traveled abroad, except when he was a baby. He went to Africa, Egypt. That's the only continent he visited as a baby. The rest of his uh, 30 year plus, about 30 years, all his ministry and growing up, he was just in Israel. But by the time he was going back to heaven, he tells to the disciples, I haven't finished the work. I have taught you what to do. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's why today you and me, we are preaching the gospel. But we are going back into time when Jesus walked on earth, when Jesus was here, ministering to people. This time he begins to extend his ministry from one town to another, preaching the gospel. But I want to zero in. What did Jesus do? He was preaching the gospel. Then we see who were with him. The 12 disciples were with uh, Jesus. And as they were with Jesus, even women were among the people that were with him. And the Bible is very interesting. He mentions even their names. Certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and sicknesses. One of those is Mary Magdalene, whom out of her seven demons came out, meaning her life was transformed. And she realized to say, this man transformed my life. What shall I do? The Bible says other women, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward or manager, and Susanna, and many other women who were providing for Jesus and his disciples using their own resources. I'm not uh, very sure uh, how these women managed. Because Jesus was moving from one town to another and these women needed to find resources to support Jesus. And if you read the Bible carefully, you discover that uh, Judah Iscariot was actually the treasurer. How can you have uh, a treasurer if you are poor? Somebody said that uh, only people with cash with money have got treasures. What's the point of having a treasurer if you have no money? And these women were getting resources, putting resources together so that Jesus' ministry could carry on. God bless the women. Even in this church, we've got mothers and women who have been supporting this work, supporting the ministry of, work of God and all of us, even as men. But I tend to believe maybe 
women have got a generous heart <laughs> than men. But we may do a statistic and uh, a survey maybe to find out. Here the women specifically have been picked to say they were supporting Jesus and his ministry using their own resources. And the situation is the same today. The gospel has to be preached. Somebody has to give in order for the gospel to go out. These this time and these women we see here, Jesus was within just uh, Israel. But he needed to eat. They needed to feed. At one time, Jesus told the disciples, can you go and buy so we can feed these people? And one of the disciples calculated to say, Jesus, do you know how much it will cost us to feed these people who have come? It will take the wages of 12 months put together and then you can feed these people. So meaning feeding was part of uh, the things that uh, Jesus and his disciples were doing. At the same time, Jesus and his disciples, they needed to eat. They needed to pay for a number of uh, things. But uh, I'm, mainly, uh, I'm uh, mainly concerned here is to point out how the women supported the ministry of Jesus Christ. May you and me be part of the people that are going to support the work of God using their own resources. Did you hear that sentence? They supported Jesus, provided him from their own substance. Jonathan, where did they get the money from? That's what he saying. Uh, give us a uh, verse. Uh, uh, she kind of gave us this uh, uh, Luke 8 and verse 3. What is verse 3 saying? They supported Jesus out of what? What is the scripture saying in the last part? They supported Jesus or they provided for Jesus and his disciples out of what? Their own means. The way Richard may get money is different from uh, how I find money. The way Jonathan you find money is different from the way Shekinah will find money. Each one of you, you've got a means to get that money. How Mama Mansa will get the money is different from uh, how Deaconess uh, will get the money. But at the end of it all, they supported the work of ministry using their own means. They had to find a way to find resources to support the ministry. I want to encourage each one of us that all of us we are encouraged to support the mission of God, to support those who are going in missions. And we thank God as a church we have done in the past and we are still doing it and we will increase our support. We have supported churches who are doing work. We send them a check to support the work they are doing. We also need money, but we, if we give, the Bible says give and it shall be given. So the more you give to support the work of God, the more God gives you resources because we are just channels. When uh, there was an earthquake, uh, in Turkey and Syria, as a church, we put our resources together to support our brothers and sisters. Just a few months ago, as a church and partners with uh, uh, partners of uh, Weapons of Revival, we had to put some resources and send to Malawi to help our brothers and sisters. So giving out of our own means is something that God wants us uh, to be doing. So giving as good principles. Give us Acts 20, 35. We have looked at this scripture and we will uh, look at it again. And Shekinah, if you can read for us, look, uh, Acts chapter number 20, written by the same author, Dr. Luke, the one we've just read. And now, uh, in Acts chapter number 20 and verse 35. 
Acts chapter number 20 and verse 35. Uh, just kind of what does the Bible say? Acts 20, 35. In all things I have shown you that by working hard. In all things. How many things? In all things I have shown you as an example. That by working hard in this way we must help the weak. And the we weak. must help the weak. We must help people who may not support themselves. Other versions will say, I have shown you how that we need to help and support the poor. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus. And remember the words of who? Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? How he himself said. It's how right. himself. What is it referring to Jesus? Sometimes when we read the Bible, we quote a scripture, but we don't investigate it. We don't uh, critique and uh, think, why is he saying what he's saying? Why is Paul quoting what he is quoting? He says, I have shown you in every way by working with my own hands. And how that we must support the weak, support those who don't have. And remember, the words of Jesus Christ himself is giving an emphasis. There is an emphasis there. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? It is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I did ponder on this one last time. But as a human being, which one is easier? David, which one do you think is easier? To receive or to give? Children, give me answers. Which one do you think, do you find it easy? To receive or to give? Be honest. To receive. But what, is, what did Jesus say? Which one is more blessed? To give or to receive? To give. Can you find the fight there, how you can struggle? It is easier to receive. It is more blessed to give. All of us, we want to receive. But the Bible says it is more blessed to give. So I want to encourage you, don't be discouraged from giving. And one of the things that we need as believers is to have a lifestyle of giving. Learn to give. Because Jesus said it himself. It is more blessed to give. And Paul says, I have shown you. So Paul is saying, what I am telling you is not what I have read in a book. What I'm telling you is not what I've heard or seen other people do. He says, I have done it myself. I have worked with my own hands. Actually, historians tell us Paul was a tent maker. He was making prayer showers and selling them to raise money, to support the weak, to give people. And he said, at one point he told the believers, is any one of you can point at me that I've used anybody's money or taken anybody's clothes. I have worked with my hands so that the gospel is not ridiculed. So he was a man who was working hard with his own means to support the work of God. And now the Bible told us in Luke to say there were women who were working with Jesus providing finding resources, selling things, and giving to the work of God. Can we be people that will use our own means to give? And remembering the words of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let's say that sentence together. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Children by yourself, one, two, three. It is blessed to give than to receive. 
So don't go home and keep telling daddy, can you give me, can you give me, can you give me? Ask daddy, can I give you something? <laughs> I'm sure the next question will be, where will I get it from? The Bible says that they use their means to find money. Make some flyers and get paid for it. One of our neighbors during COVID, because people were not going out and most of the car washes uh, closed down. You know what they did? They bought uh, a car wash machine, the jet pumps, and uh, they put it outside the house. I thought they were doing it for free. <laughs> and then they asked me when I was pulling uh, back into the yard, they said, would you like your car to be washed? I said, oh yes, please. And he says, uh, it's just 10 pounds. My son wants to be making a bit of money during the lockdown. So I said, this is very good. Use, a, use a means to earn money. Of course, good means. You can uh, do the chores at home, wash the dishes, sweep the house, and then ask mommy to give you some money for doing the work at home. All of us as elders, we are working. Let's find these uh, means of making money to support the kingdom of God. Support those who are going into missions. Above all, remembering the weak, remembering the poor, remembering people that cannot even pay us back. People ask us when we go to do charity work, who is paying for you? And when you tell them that we are paying for ourselves, we look crazy to say, how can you pay for yourself when you are doing this? Uh, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's what the scripture says. Exodus 36, Eliezer, if you can read this one for us. Exodus 36. Let's all go to that scripture. Exodus 36. Exodus chapter number 36. Verse 1 to 7, we are still dealing with giving to support the work of God. So Bezalel, Oholibah, and every skilled person will do the work the Lord has commanded. The so these names they are mentioning are people that were working. The work that they needed to make things for the tabernacle, for the tent. And God gave them the skill to do these things, and they are mentioned by name. We'll do the work that the Lord has commanded. The Lord gave these people the wisdom and understanding to do all the skilled work. Just pause them. there. God gave them skill, wisdom to do the work. Do you know that uh, we are all talented in different ways? Mama Mansa, she's a nurse. Tinko and she does different job. Pastor Bonfa is that different thing. I am doing different things. Richard is doing different things. You guys are doing different things. Sister Woos does different things. Brother John does different things. But all these talents, as we learned from last time, who gave us these skills? God. Who gave us the talent? Others, they just uh, kick the football and they earn a lot of money. Others, they, are, they do cricket. Others, they do plumbing. Others, they do different, different things. Others, they sing. My children were watching, uh, I don't know, is it British has got talent? Young people, uh, somebody was saying, I'm 14. Uh, another person says, oh, I'm 15. They play instruments, and they are on these big shows, and they are being sponsored and paid. And then you're thinking, wow, these are young people, but they've got something that they do. Here in the Bible, we find Bazarel, whom God had given the skill. Can you find that skill within you? What is it that God has given you that you can do? And when you do it, it earns you money. It earns you resources. Amen. Carry on. The Lord gave these people the wisdom and understanding to do all the skilled work needed to build the holy tent. Then Moses called Bezabel and Aholiab and all the other skilled people to whom the Lord has given skills. And they came before, they came because they wanted to help with the work. They, they wanted to do what? 
to hell with the work of God. Other version says they willingly came so they can help make the tent of God. When you are giving, one principle that works in giving is that give willingly. How should we give? Willingly, without anybody forcing us. I heard, sir, I've heard that, I'm sure some of you, you might have heard some weird demands. If you don't give, I'm not going to pray for you. Give a hundred pounds and I'll pray for you. People are charging to be prayed for. God have mercy. You can't buy prayer. You can't buy the anointing. You can give to the man of God, but we should not charge. Jesus never charged anybody to be healed or to be prayed for. I don't know where, which versions and Bibles that people read. If you give this, we will pray for you. And uh, there was uh, some breakfast somewhere to say if you want to sit on the table where the man of God will sit, you pay $500. The next table, you pay this much. Far away from the man of God, you pay this much. Those sitting at the back, they will pay less. The kingdom of God, some people have turned it into business. Paul calls them to say, some are doing ministry for their own babies. And somebody said, uh, these politics uh, uh, of babies whereby they want to eat, so they will say things because they want somebody to pay them. In the kingdom of God, I'm afraid it has crept in where people want to do God's work because they want to be paid. But thanks be to God for these men in uh, Exodus, they seek willingly they gave their skill. How should you do it, Jonathan? Willingly. Operating the take things uh, willingly in the house of God. Coming to church willingly. Giving your time willingly. Giving your resources willingly unto the Lord. Amen. So willingness is something that you need. I'm sure if we ask people who go to work, do you go to work willingly? Sometimes the answer is no. I want to sleep a bit more. <laughs> but I have to go because uh, if I don't go, I will not be paid. But when it comes to giving to God, coming to the house of God, we must do it willingly. Carry on to read. What is the verse saying? They received from Moses everything the people of Israel had brought gifts. And these people who were doing the work were receiving materials from people. People were giving. Carry on. People were giving and bringing to the tent so they can make the altar, so they can make the brass and lover, so they could make all the items that were needed in the tent of God. The people continued to bring gifts and they were bringing because they wanted to. So they gave people, these are people now, they were people who are working, they are working willingly. The people who are giving, they are also giving willingly because they wanted to give. What a good combination. Carry on. So all the skilled workers left the work they were doing on the holy tent and they went to speak to Moses. The, the workers, they said, you know what? Something is happening here. Something is wrong. We need to go and speak to our boss. Now hear these words. This is the only script I find which amazes me in the Bible. Yes. They said, the people are bringing more than we need to do the work. They went to Moses to complain. Do you know the complaint that they took to Moses? The one we just read it is, I read it again. What was the complaint to Moses? The people are bringing more than we need. To the people are giving more than we need. We have to stop the people from giving. I want that to happen. Whereby you bring your offerings, you bring everything to church and say, you know what? You have given too much. Stop, stop, stop. You have given enough. So they went to Moses and complained that people have given more 
than we need. Read a bit more, Eliezer. Then Moses said this command throughout the camp. No man or woman should make anything else as a gift for the holy tent. 